everybody, and welcome to episode three of the Mind and Muse podcast. This is my corner of the internet where I talk to you a little bit about my crafty life, and that would include crochet, some knitting, a little bit of sewing, some felting, and any other craft that I pick up along the way and would like to share with you. My name is Caroline, I am your host, and I come to you from the western side of the island of Puerto Rico in the Caribbean. It is Tuesday. Uh, today is Tuesday, April the 17th. And I started out really early this morning trying to create this podcast for you. And it is already past 10 in the morning and I am just beginning. So we'll see how it goes. It, it The thing about it is that we are already in April, which here is um, part of maybe the warmer months it rains a lot but it's muggy and it's humid and so what you don't get done early you basically are not going to get it done so i like to start up early i like to pl i plan to start up early would be the phrase but it never happens it never happens because it takes me too much time to get my mindset to do this type of thing so anyway let's get started this is episode four and I am welcoming you back if you are a returning viewer, if you have stuck with me through the first three episodes and are returning for um, some more crafty time with me, I thank you very much. And if you are a new viewer who just discovered me for some reason, be it a recommendation from YouTube or um, some other podcaster or somebody who just watches crafty stuff like you do, well then I thank you for taking the time to try me out and let's see if I can motivate you and get you enthusiastic about what goes on on this podcast from a week-to-week -week basis. Okay, normally we start out with what am I wearing, but I'm not wearing anything me made today. Um, so I'm going to go on to what our finished objects are. And the keen eye around you <laughs> will notice that on my a mannequin called Cora. Her name is Cora. I have placed the finished object, the finished blurred line sweater. Now I was hoping to have it on and, and try it on for you so that you could see what it looked like, but I don't think that is going to happen because it is just too hot. I, I, that's why I wanted to start out early because I wanted to be able to have it on for you so you could see what it finally looked like, but it got too late in the day and so I might turn on the air condition a little bit in a little while and, and take a video for you so I can add it in here and um, you can have a closer look of what the finished object actually looks like. Um, if you're here for the first time, then I'll just uh, mention that this is the Blurred Line Sweater by Addy Day Designs and uh, it was published uh, maybe a couple months ago. I had started this back in February, hoping to finish it for my trip to the Edinburgh Yarn Festival but I didn't get it finished, so it went with me. It took the trip with me there, and I wasn't able to finish it over there either. I finished it um, just recently, just recently. This week I published the final photo on Instagram of uh, my blurred line sweater, and um, yeah, I'll bring Cora in maybe a little closer so that you can get a little more of the details and she can share, she can share the screen with me. And so um, these are the blurred lines, obviously. The yarn being used, I have mentioned before, is Misty Cloud from Craftinoon Treats. It's a blend of silk and wool. And the purple, the um, between variegated and, and, and the tonal, um, is a yarn by Forbidden Woolery in her Heather colorway. It is a bamboo wool blend. And uh, this was in this extra size, uh, sorry, it's in the extra small size, but um, the recommendation was a 3.5 millimeter hook and I went up to a four because I was, I didn't want it to be as big as the small, but I was afraid the extra small would be too tight, so I went up to a four millimeter hook size for most of the garment. When I got back down to the, the sleeves here, I had returned to a 3.5 because um, this wool silk blend, I didn't like the way it was looking on the four millimeter. And so 
the final stage also the, the cuff here has a thumb hole and the cup is made on a, a smaller size yet on a three millimeter. So it's got rib edges and rib neckline and it's different techniques for short rows and crocheting in the spiral that just worked out terrific. I really enjoyed, enjoyed, enjoyed this make. Um, there's a cow that starts, I believe it started yesterday for making the blurred line on the Addy Day design um, Addie Day's podcast, I believe, on Ravelry. And, uh, no, I'm sorry. Addie Day's Ravelry page, not her podcast. But um, I was thinking, actually, about joining in and making another one because I really like the shape of the neckline and the, the fall of the back. I really like the drape of it. And I like the blurred lines. I was thinking about doing a, maybe a third color, but maybe keeping this one short or three-fourth sleeves. But, you know... As things go, when you sit down and think about it and you say, well, why am I going to make another one where there are so many patterns out there and I can just make something new? Well, I guess my answer to that would be is because I enjoyed making it, I really like the fit, and I like the idea of the slight striping I guess you could call it the way one color goes into the other and I would really like to try it with another set of colors I think that even though you make the same project you might be able to get it to look a little differently by changing your yarn or um, by making slight changes to the yarn composition and um, the thing about it is that once you do a project like I had a lot of difficulties with the cuff. It was the only part, I think, that actually made my life a little difficult. And there was no, no mistake in the pattern or anything like that. It was just that um, finding where exactly to put the hole so my thumb would fit in and that I wouldn't get too much uh, twisting on this part. And um, that took me a while. <laughs> actually, it took me several while. I mean, I had finished one. Oh, it was okay. I did the second one, I made it way too big because there I, I didn't do the instructions right, I, I misread the instructions that second time, tore it out, redid it again, oh I like the way this one is so I'm going to tear out the other one and redo it again and then it was too, for some reason this one was coming out too small the second time that I did it and well, the thing was that I did it about four times and I was already at the end, I was almost done, it was almost over with and so um that was probably the only part where I would say when you get around to it, think about it a little bit and um, uh, work it, try and get the right placement for your thumb before you go all the way around because this is um, crocheting in the back loop only, like vertical up and down. And so it takes time. It's, it takes time and you don't want to go all the way through it like I did and then realize that it's wrong and to loop all the way back. But it was living in... This bag, if you remember, this is from Betsy Makes, uh, Betsy Makes uh, drawstring bag. And um, if you haven't seen it before, that's the blurred line sweater by Addie Day. And this is what I have left, just to show you a little bit of what I had left. I had uh, basically 400 grams of yarn, uh, 200 grams of the one color, and 200 grams of the other. This is what I have left of each color. I think it's more or less the same. There might be a little bit more left of um, the misty cloud, but I think it was because this I had already wound it up for a pre previous project and used a little bit of it, realized that wasn't the project I wanted to do with it, and then tore it back. So, But basically, I would say that I, there's probably about 30 grams here of each. So it's not going to use... You know, as much yarn as I thought it would use. There was one point where I thought maybe I wouldn't have enough. It's fine. It's, and I like it very much, and I'm very happy with it. And yes, this is definitely one that I would think about making again. So I'm very happy with it. I, I could actually say that I do love my sweater. I would love to be able to wear it because it's so soft. The silk in it just makes it so delicious and the bamboo blend. And I know it's not 
super hot, like I could wear it for spring somewhere, but I'd have to go somewhere in order to wear it because I can't wear it here. So I'll save it. I'm going to save it for my next trip and um, I'm going to enjoy it then. So that's, that's Cora and my Blurred Lines sweater. First finished object. My second finished object. And if you remember, it was living in this bag. It was um, an appropriate make. The yarn was matching my bag. This is um, Lion Brand, Sock Ease. And there were two colorways. One is Circus Peanut. And the other, I think it's, the other one, I think is Sour Ball or something like that. Something to do with sour candy. And I had previously made with, let me see. This is just a wool and nylon, I believe. 75% wool, 25% nylon. There are 100 grams, 3.5 ounces in this. There were <laughs> at the beginning in um, this skein. And it has 438 yards. With those 438 yards, I had made a, I think, a full-length sock. I could consider it for Clarissa Beth. It was the first pair of crochet socks that I made for her um, using half-length double linked double crochet stitches so I wanted them to be long so I could hurry up and but I wanted them to be linked so it would be cushiony so that it would cover up a little bit the holes and I mentioned it because I believe that type of stitch uses more yarn well I made that complete set of so that pair of socks for her and then now I have completed the pair of baseline socks another Addy Day design see if I can get a little picture of them here. Okay. These are baseline socks. And they, uh, I decided to do a shorty because I wasn't sure if I was going to have enough yarn to complete it. These are uh, created with gusset shaping and a heel flap and also they use crochet brioche. Now I thought that that the brioche was going to use a lot of yarn, and maybe I wouldn't have enough. So I stuck with the shorty. I didn't do the the um, the large sock. I did the shorty. I used I did size two, and I used a four millimeter hook, which is what the pattern recommends. And I have to say that another joy for me. It was another project that I just enjoyed, but. A lot. It was so much fun, <laughs> if you could call it that. I don't know if we don't all have the same idea for fun, but I found it to be entertaining. The fact that I was changing colors every so often kept me entertained. I mean, it wasn't uh, this boredom, this this um, tedious going around and around and around since you were changing your yarns and you were changing your stitch. You had your brioche at the front, single crochet at the back. It was very entertaining, and I have to say that if that I really want to make another pair. I really want to make another pair. Let me show you the finished objects. They're over here on Sock Bloggers. Okay. These are acrylic Sock Bloggers. I don't even know how well you can actually see them. It might look just look like the sock is flying in the air. The are from um, the blockers, sock blockers are from Indigo Chickens. And this is my finished baseline sock. And I got a pair. Here's a pair. They were both finished. And I just do have to say that I really, really like it a lot. What I can say is that I have not tried them on with shoes. Remember that I said in the past that I like to make shorties because I do exercise and I with my when I exercise I do will use wool socks because I have found that the wool socks absorb the humidity, absorb the moisture a lot better, keep my feet a lot drier and you actually don't overheat. It actually does not overheat. I do my exercise also early in the morning so so um, it's cooler but I really do enjoy prefer 
exercising with wool socks. So, but I haven't tried, had the chance to try these on. I was waiting to for the podcast to show them before I actually use them. But um, I will do that and get back to you on that because I really, I really like um, the sock. I'll take it off for a minute here and show it to you. Like, so that you can, maybe you can see the difference in texture between the back and and the front and so yeah this is a thicker this is the brioche on the inside well, that's what it looks like on the inside I thought that looked really cool and so it is uh, I don't know if you can appreciate it there but it is a lot thicker than the back part but I'll stick in a photo of me wearing them so you can see how they look on the foot. But let me tell you, this if you have never made socks, well, crochet socks, that is, crochet socks, but you have experienced crocheting because you do need to follow instructions and uh, you do need to do know how to do front, both front post, back post, put your one yarn color and hold while you do another. And there are some things you need to do. But if you are, have some experience crocheting and you have never done a crochet sock and this were to be your first sock, it would be a marvelous experience. Not only the crocheting bit, but also the end product. The end product is pretty. I want to make another pair. I want to just use solid colors because I was just making this out of stash. I wasn't, um, I just wanted to use up yarn that I had. And so, but I really would like to make them again, but in a, in two solid colors, in two solid colors. And actually what I was thinking about doing was I was thinking about purchasing a light fingering weight or lace weight wool with nylon. I did find, I did find some at Knit Picks. Uh, I wasn't really sure if that existed because of the, the purpose of lace yarn maybe is not the same as other types of yarn, but they do have it. And I was thinking about crocheting up a pair using two colors, two solid colors of lace weight yarn. And maybe on the back, instead of using the single crochet, since it's lace weight, I don't want it to wear out too quickly. Maybe I do a half double crochet or something like that at the back. But I do want to do them again. I do want to do them again. I really like the fit. Her instructions are to the T. When she tells you do this this long and stop here, stop there, it's going to work. When she tells you to measure your foot and use the closest measurement, but pre preferably if it's not exact, go down. For example, I have an 8.25 circumference around my foot. None of the sizes included that measurement, so I went down to a size 2 that was at 8. And she said it's preferable to go down and to go up, and I believe her. It, it is correct. I really do like the way the sock fits. I really, it has just enough negative ease so that I know it won't stretch that quickly. The only thing that I will say about it that is usually my problems with crochet socks is always the cuff. I would have liked the cuff. Well, I actually tried to modify the cuff a little bit so that I could pull it in more and I've got a thing for baggy cuffs, but um, I don't know if that's the nature also of shorties. I don't think I've ever made a pattern for shorties. I've done socks that were supposed to be regular socks and made them into shorties because I didn't want to continue, but I've never actually made a pattern that is for shorties. And I don't know, maybe that's the nature of them. I don't know, but I really, I, I love them. I like them a lot. Everything is crochet, the cuff included, and so I'm really pleased with them, and yes, I would make another one. And so thumbs up for Addie Day with her first baseline sock pattern. <clears throat> she did a great job, and I really loved it. Not that, not that she needs me to tell her that she did a great job, because, well, she does with her patterns, right? But, well, I'll put it out there for whoever's interested. In case somebody, um, she's a new designer for somebody, well then just let you know that. It, it's great, both patterns are great. Now moving on to our felting segment, I have one finished object 
in uh, one finished felting object. This week I I think I've said, I've told you in the past that once I finished a big project like the sweater that I just completed, well, long term, not necessarily big, but long term, I like to rest, rest my muscles, change my activity so that I can go back to the crochet or the knitting at another moment. And usually I choose my in-between projects to be felting projects. So I continued this week to work on my felting pin cushions. I don't know if you realized this week that Clarissa Beth of Crochet Cakes opened up her Etsy shop. It's called Dainty by Crochet Cakes. And in the shop she made available during the week notion pouches and project bags. All of them related in somehow to tea, to cupcakes, to cakes, to delicacies of the sweet sort. And so continuing with this theme, I believe that sometime in the near future I will be able to provide her with some pin cushions, some of my felted pin cushions, either in the shape of cupcakes or uh, pies or pieces of cakes and things that go along with her theme of delicacies, of sweet delicacies. And also, at some point, we will probably make available the crochet, the um, yarn ball necklaces that I also created as giveaways for Edinburgh. So it's an idea in progress for, for her. And at some point, I will be invited to so that she can outsource some of the items that she's going to have available and she doesn't have to make them all herself. And so one of the things that I plan to have available for those of you that have asked in the past where you could purchase such an item or have mentioned that you would be willing to, uh, you would like to be able to purchase one, well, we'll have available one of the things will be these pin cushions of this nature. As I say, they will be needle felted pin cushions and they will they will follow the theme of being delicacies. This one is a strawberry cupcake. It's a chocolate cupcake, sorry, with strawberry frosting and with a ch or cherry frosting and cherry on top. And the idea is to keep the samples we work up delicate and sweet. <laughs> delicate and sweet. And so this is one of the items that in the near future, well, she might have available in her shop for those of you that are interested. And so I was working on prototypes this week. What I realized is that it is difficult in Puerto Rico to find high quality crafting felt or high quality crafting wool for or wool roving. So I've had to uh, purchase a lot of that online, a lot of the materials online and currently waiting for them to come in before I create products that can be put in the shop. This one I am going to save for a giveaway. Remember that I told you that I was going to set a goal for our first giveaway and figure out how to do it, whether I needed to open up a Ravelry group or whether I could just do a random giveaway from the YouTube subscribers or choose from the comments a random subscriber. Don't know yet, but it is in the making, in the thinking, um, this first giveaway. And this is one of the things that I plan to include. This made by me cupcake pin cushion. Okay, so um, we're working on that. I'm trying to perfect that and and uh, trying to make it with good quality materials so that it will it'll last and to be able to make it with techniques that I can repeat and always create a standard product. That is the finished object for felting. Moving on to works in progress, to works in progress, you'll remember that last week I was working on a second sock. It was a second test sock for the sweet crochet sock pattern that I am creating with Clarissa Vith, and hopefully we want to use it for the sock along that we plan to have somewhere at the end of, of uh, the summer, near the beginning maybe of uh, September more like. Um, we've been working on that up to now. We have each made a prototype and we have found the flaws in the original pattern. We have made corrections and basically this time around what I wanted to do was take the instructions that Clarissa Beth altered, test them out, 
but also be able to offer options. I mean, how, how easy is it to take this pattern and say, I don't like the stitch that is used on the base of the foot, can I change it? Or I don't like the stitch that you're using for the leg, can I change it? Or I need to make, I don't fit into any of the sizes you provide, how easy is it to alter um, the pattern so that it'll fit me, it'll be modified for my foot, right, for my, my own foot. So I created, I was creating a sock last week that the only thing we saw up to the moment was the foot, right? And now I have completing it in the version that I'm calling my shorty, my sweet shorty cupcake sock. You'll remember that this, this, I don't know if it's blowing out because basically <laughs> this is a really neon pink with little spots of blue maybe, but it's really neon. That is explosive material from Goosey Fibers. It's a 7525 Merino nylon. The cuff on this one, the original cuff says to knit. This cuff, I crocheted it just to show you that the entire sock can be made using crochet and it also fits like a glove. It's, it, it has a very nice fit, even if you crochet the, the cuff. I only did one line of the cupcake stitch. Remember that the cupcake stitch I have borrowed from willmade.com. She has a pattern for making a crochet stitch afghan and I only wanted the stitch and I adapted it to work in the round because for the afghan obviously it's worked flat. And this one I wanted to make using three colors, this, these cupcakes, so that you could actually see the way she shows the stitch on her site, on her on her blog post. So I used three colors for my cupcakes. The um, first color is the color that I dyed up sometime last year using onion skins and rambutan, also skins and pits. This is a cloudborne high twisted sock 7525 that um, I really like that, that like camel color. And the cupcake itself is was made using this this speckled, this very lightly speckled yellow. It's called sugar cookies. It's called sugar cookies and it's also a wool nylon blend. That one is from I believe BU, BU fibers, mm. BU fibers. The good thing about these, both of these, the BU fibers and also the explosive material from Goosey fibers is they bring a lot of yards, 463 uh, yards. A, I made a complete pair of socks with this and still have a, a lot left over. And I do believe I'm going to be able to make these shorties and I'll have a lot left over to probably make another pair of shorties even. The white, the cupcake frosting is simply white from uh, Drops Fable. It says colorway 100, but that's just their white. And it's also, it's a sock blend, so it's also wool and nylon. Yardage is, is, it's only 50 grams. It's not, it doesn't come in 100 grams, so, um, but the yardage is comparative. So I am not the greatest fan of changing colors in my work. I shy away from blankets, from granny square blank, from granny stitch blankets and all of that because I don't like to change, I just don't like the idea of hiding all those ends just bothers me. So my ends are all hidden. There's there's no ends on this one. I took the task of doing it quickly. So things I don't like, I like to get done quickly. But I did want to show you how it would look once at least. So those of you that like to do that type of thing can see that it is a possibility. It's a possibility to make your cupcakes uh, more than one color and bring out the pattern if you desire. It's a kind of a nice pattern for the younger folks, right? For the for the younger younger children. But definitely I would wear these with 
with um, some clogs and uh, show off my nice neon socks with maybe a jean skirt or, or a dress. And so, yeah, um, the testing and the retesting basically is to make sure that it's un we can understand it well, that the sizes fit, but also to, to try out the different possibilities if you want to modify and to show you that it's possible and you can still get a nice looking and a, a sock that fits very well. So My other work in progress for this week is another felting project. You'll remember that when I came back from Edinburgh, I brought a kit back with me, the Pretty Bird Needle Felted Picture Kit by Aileen Clark. And I was working on mine this week. Remember that the kit includes all the materials. It includes the mat that you use for felting. It includes the, the batting or the roving that you need. It also includes the felting needles, the embroidery needles, the embroidery thread, um, little bits and bobs like um, eyelet for, for eyes and, and little beads for decorative purposes. It's all in there. And this is what I have done up to now. This is about an hour and a half of sitting and punching. And so I'll show you the other one. I, well, in this case, I'm not trying to be creative or anything like that. I am trying to recreate the kit, the picture that's on the kit. I probably could have gone in my own direction here, but no, this was meant to be mindless in the sense that let's not think about it. Let's just reproduce what's on the, the cover and rest. Rest my muscles, rest my mind, rest um, from one craft and change my skills to another for a while so that you know you can recharge, refuel and recharge to take on another uh, project. So this is what I worked on this week. I think most of the felting I think is done. There might be some edge that needs to be filled in a little bit more, but I believe it's done. What are left, if you'll notice, are the markings where embroidery is going to be done. And then we'll have to add some details like the, the beaded eyes and things like that. And it will be done. I'm not sure yet if I am going to use it as maybe the front of a project bag or if I'm going to frame it and put it on the wall as a type of wall art or gift it as a present. We've got Mother's Day coming up in May here in the U United States. So, yeah. But whatever it is, I'm pretty sure it's going to make a nice gift. I think it looks pretty nice already. So that is my only other work in progress. I, I have not started my second sock for the cupcake socks and I have nothing else on my hook. I do have plans though that I just wanted to share with you before I end this. One of my plans is to start a knitting project. This time last year I was, I had already finished, it's April so yeah, it was a little bit earlier. I had already finished my first knitted shawl when I participated in an MCAL, a mystery knit along by Helen Stewart of Crochet ha of Curious Handmade, Cur Curious Handmade, and she created a shawl for a mystery knit along, which means that you are provided the clues one at a time over several months. Of, sorry, not months. Over several weeks. In the long run, you probably do have a couple of months to finish the project to its entirety, but the um, clues are provided one at a time, one week at a time. And the idea is for you to knit up a piece without knowing what the whole project is going to look like, only by receiving at the beginning some suggestions for yarn selection. In this case, we were, um, well, in the next case, the one that I haven't men mentioned, but in the previous case, well, you just told basically how to coordinate your selection so that the end product would look agreeable, would look um, harmonious and, and have a nice look to it. So Helen Stewart of The Curious Handmade published recently, again, she opened up a Impressionist's MCAL. And as soon as I saw it, 
I bought the pattern. At that point, what you had was an introduction of how to select your yarns and whatnot. But what always catches me are the introductions that she puts on the actual clue. And so she starts out by saying, when you stand in front of an Impressionist masterpiece, what do you see? Quiet vibrancy, indistinct edges, and clear, warm light. The richness of ordinary moments captured in glimpses. This is the true magic of the Impressionists. So with that introduction, who would not want to participate? When you think that you're crafting, that you're uh, creating stitch by stitch could be a masterpiece of this type, of this form. When you see and hear that so much thought has gone into the creative process of a project, you want to participate. So I purchased the pattern and I selected my yarns. For this project I chose, you had to choose one light, one medium, and one dark color. And there weren't any instructions on whether they had to be variegated or whether they had to be solids or what, uh, what type of mixing of colors you could uh, use. So you just had to imagine. Some people, what they did was they chose an Impressionist painting and then they went along trying to recreate the colors in that painting. I just winged it as usual. I chose from my stash this sort of like raspberry, is it sort of like a raspberry color that I dyed using the same cloud-born high twist sock using, in this case, avocado stones and um, iron core as a mordant. And we got this, this intense raspberry color. And the raspberry color, I intended to pair it, that was my light color, and then I intended to pair it with medium color, which if you'll remember, well maybe not, because things don't ever look the same when they're caked up, but this is my Edinburgh um, yarn colorway that was dyed by Vullenvine, red Vullenvine yarns, I was able to get a skein of that, and so I am pairing up those two colors. And for my third color, it hasn't been caked up yet because my intention was to purchase the pattern and to do the complete the first clue, but I just chickened out and decided that I was going to wait until people started posting spoilers so that I could see how difficult it looks and what the final project was looking like before I decided to commit myself to it. So it'll be loves. And it was actually dyed up for a different... It was actually dyed up for a different... Cal, and um, I purchased it because it is wool is a wool silk blend, and so I decided to combine it with these colors to create my impressionist painting. What do you think? What I do know about it is that it's a crescent shawl that a lot of people have given away already, and it, it is not a difficult to guess because that's what the MCAL was last year, also. I think. Um, Helen Stewart likes making crescent cows, crescent shawls. And so, um, yeah, those are my colors. And um, if I can brave it, if I can muster up the courage to start this new pro project, then maybe by the next podcast, I'll have actually something to show you. I'm going to look into that over the, the next week. Who knows? Maybe when we meet again, I'll have a shawl and a sweater in progress to share with you. And so... Until then, until the next couple of weeks, don't forget to stop by the Dainty by Crochet Cakes shop on Etsy if you like that sort of thing to see um, what dainty items she's putting in there. Don't forget to subscribe underneath if you want to, if you want to be notified when I put up a new video and, and not have to be constantly checking back and forth to see. You can just hit on that bell button next to the subscribe button and it will give you, send you a notification when I upload a new video to this channel. If you have liked the content of this video and if you would like to continue share me, like me to continue sharing this content with you, please hit the like button below also. And until we meet again, 
keep yourself safe, keep yourself healthy, and keep crafting. Bye for now.